Hey, what's going on guys? Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency update. I hope all is well. Be sure to watch until the end of this video and let's get right into it. So while some are seeing breadcrumbs, I am seeing loaves of bread. I'm not trying to show you this video to take up time. I literally want you to listen to this. Again, this is Bread Garlinghouse at also, um, I believe it is a uh, parallel held and hosted by the Chamber of Digital Commerce. Um, and again, pay close attention to this. This was just on July 17th. He's using a lot of the same talking points that we've seen. He's using the same talking points that we saw him type out during that WebEx as well. Um, and some also interesting things. Uh, again, and I'm also a believer, like some other people, that words do mean things. So you guys can speculate if you want. I may over speculate some places. That's up to me. You guys do your own research, but just listen up to what is to come, all right? I mean, the simple answer is yes. You know, putting it into effect is more complex. Um, but I think the simple answer to that is yes, of course. The, the reality is, you know, cryptocurrency is here to stay. It's not something that's going away. It's not a fad. And that goes back to part of the education I was talking about. I think a lot of policymakers and lawmakers think that it's a fad. They, they see the Twitter thing and they go, oh, see, it's just a scam, right? Exactly. And what we've been saying this entire time is that people don't get it. They think it's not going to be open source. They think it's only going to be, you know, closed protocols and that are truly utilized that is so foolish and myopic to think the only way that dlt will be financially inclusive and based upon truly trust and actually make a difference is by being and at least interoperating with and being connected with these open networks there's too many silos we need to break it down there's still going to exist silos and that will be perfectly natural there's also going to be kind of a, a medium group where it's a little more distributed but still relatively centralized and then there's going to be also networks that are entirely decentralized again they're here to stay and that is why i'm so excited day in and day out to invest into these open source protocols um but but it's not it's it's, it's here to stay and it, it includes, you know, public uh, digital currencies. Boom. Well, that's a bet that, uh, Brad, you're making. Absolutely. You're building that infrastructure, that architecture of a tomorrow that we see coming. What are the challenges uh, that you think um, you need to overcome? Eh, I was going to say something funny. Never mind. Well, you know, I, I would be beating a dead horse to talk more about the, the regulatory clarity challenge. Uh, you know, beyond that, it, it, certainly... It, Selling into a pandemic is uh, a little bit tricky. We are seeing at Ripple both some headwinds because, you know, getting in-person meetings, which has been the, the- Notice you said headwinds. Cornerstone of some of our sales efforts is hard. But we're also seeing a lot of tailwinds. And tailwinds. Almost sounds like he's on a boat or maybe a ship. Reminds me of a certain picture I saw in a PowerPoint that he presented. The same picture that a one Riddler posted named Mr. Pool, and also, you know, BG123 posted that boat. And again, that is just for fun speculation. I know some people are going to be upset that I even mentioned that. Too bad. I thought it was worth noting and, you know, interesting. Uh, you know, I have said publicly, I think that the macro view on crypto in a world where you're seeing you know, massive stimulus of fiat currencies, uh, you know, that's very inflationary over a longer arc of time. And I think that's probably very good for the crypto. But I also think this isn't just about crypto as a speculative asset. It's about crypto solving using these technologies to solve real problems again it's not to make us money it is to solve real problems that is just icing on the cake and i think that over a longer arc of time is really where kind of quote what the promised land will be quote not just for you know what ripple is doing in the xrp community but really crypto on a broad base and i i think all boats can rise absolutely and so all boats are going to rise, but you have to catch the best part of the wave, and you have to have a pretty damn good boat. For me, it's, hey, we need to make sure there's regulatory clarity. We need to make sure we're focused on real use cases, not science experiments, but actually solving real problems. Silicon Valley has a reputation, I think deservedly, of sometimes having technologies in search of a problem which don't really go anywhere. And I think it's important that the various projects, regardless of what technology platform are, is being used, need to be clear about who their customer is and what problem they're solving. All right, on to the next one. So I saw on, so again, same article, coinspeaker.com, just kind of summarizing what, you know, BG was saying here. 
And as we go on, I saw King Solomon sharing this post about Fed Chairman Powell, everybody's favorite person, and he's actually going to be speaking shortly. And again, guys, some people are speculating that we're going to have more announcements regarding the, again, Fed interest rates. We've been talking for you know well over a year. There's been people levels beyond me in terms of intelligence calling for this quite some time. Um, I know that you know we've been calling it, and we thought it was going to happen at the end of 2019, and it really seems like it's happening now. It's kind of been a phased out approach. You've noticed that there's been multiple phases, multiple you know, stages, almost like some type of, you know, military strategist is leading this whole front. Really interesting. Again, we know, you know, in the US, Trump does not speak highly of Powell. And as we can see here, we'll speak Thursday during a virtual version of the Fed's annual Jackson Hole Wyoming conference. He's expected to outline what could be the central bank's most active efforts ever to spur inflation back to a healthy level. Well, what do you guys think? Do you think he's going to decrease the interest rate or increase it? We know that many of the countries around the globe are already negative, and it seems like they've been kind of uh, grooming us for quite some time. All right, and I was laughing pretty hard here because this guy over here, Fantasma Smokes, he literally was like, if this guy announces negative interest rates, I'm buying a boat. Getting your money out of the you know market, if it's not going to be earning anything, I know in the previous video I said, if your money is not working for you nowadays, that's you know that's on you. Again, the opportunities are there. Okay, so right here, here's the federal funds rate as an example. So one year ago, we were at 2.25%. Look at today or this week, 0.25%, essentially 0% interest rates. So what good is it doing? I mean, again, I understand having liquidity on hand, but there comes a point if you're holding, you know, well over even the FDIC insured amount, what are you doing? Could you be a little bit more tactical and, you know, strategic with your efforts? Potentially, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just telling you that I do not, you know, I'm not choosing that for myself. All right. But I have a, obviously I have a higher, I'm less risk averse specifically at this point in my life. All right. So again, we'll see what happens. He might not even mention it, but just my guess that we'll be seeing that come to fruition sooner than later. All right. Next, I wanted to announce this. So I trust capital guys just doing a public announcement regarding flair. I know everybody wants to get their spark tokens. They want to get their free money. Um, and again, I don't think it's going to be valued that high initially, but the upside could be, you know, the sky's the limit. We'll see. I'm not going to speculate on a price prediction for that. I know it's exciting for airdrops, guys, specifically people finally getting rewarded something for holding XRP for so, you know, such a long time. And as we can see right here, we are going to watch the network go live and see if it's secure for a few months. And again, you guys have plenty of months to claim your tokens. It's not just like a one day thing and you miss it. And if the bridge token is trading at a reasonable valuation with sufficient liquidity, which will be key. And again, there's a lot of XRP holders in the community. I'm sure that Ripple will try to, you know, incentivize some market makers to potentially do this or flare or you know spring we'll see and the demand is still present we will likely support it okay so interestingly enough again i know some people in the comments here um, are looking forward to that and hopefully i trust capital will do so provided there's sufficient liquidity again links are in the video description if you guys do not have an account or would like one um for some people it might not be the best fit for me i did roll an old ira i had over and i have it you know an extra p gold you guys can do whatever you want and again if you have or were laid off with a 401k or you have an existing Roth IRA, this potentially could be for you as the equity markets is roughly at an all-time high and crypto is just getting started. All right, not financial advice. I just recommend, obviously, using the link in the description below. You can use my name as a one-month free and talk to them at least and kind of get an idea if this would be a good fit for you. I used another custodian with a, an IRA for crypto, and I, I'm not saying this to, you know, convince you or anything but the fees were absolutely ridiculous until a better competitor comes along i will continue to be talking about i trust capital i just don't see any other group that is even relatively close to what they're doing right now specifically offering a variety of crypto assets gold and then potentially silver on the way all right next jana one trick guys jana underscore uh one underscore trick um and also i did forget to shout out thank you uh, again yes i'll have some for sharing this video clip all right so let me show, go back to Jana now. So this is pretty interesting. I'm sure many of you have already discovered this as well. But uh, she actually found that there were two new trademarks owned by Ripple Labs. The filing dates were the 11th and August 19th of 2020. Interestingly enough, and, you know, some people might say this is fake and, you know, they're just trying to create more, you know, hype and speculation. I think these are legitimate. Um, as you can see, when I try to click the link, they're a dead link now. And she actually shows video proof below. Um, so let me just show you. She actually shows the video herself. Let me mute that. Let me make it a little smaller. Um, let's see. All right. So if you can watch this, I got to mute it. Sorry about that. So right here, USPTO on the United States Patent and Trademark Office. 
and she'll literally go through and search through the trademark database just so you guys can see for yourselves um and again one of them is kind of regarding ripple impact it's essentially looks like it's going to be some type of charity foundation i have to look more into this um i'm sure you know as the months develop we'll hear more about it should not be surprised and it's just really cool that we have people in the community digging so deep and just keeping tabs on things each and every day because we know how fast something you know can kind of be brushed under the rug and obviously see it resurface later on all right so again then also ripple x okay so we'll simply see um i know you know many articles as well that follow all the great researchers in this community uh, just put things out so we have the daily daily hodl again ripple files trademark for a mysterious Ripplex and ripple impact um, again guys exciting we'll see what happens um you know typical talks typical drama security talks now we have lawsuits again with pay id with ripple versus npp australia remember when ripple came out with pay id there was all types of confusion asking if pay id was the same type of initiative and again npp australia has been using this pay id they came out with it first it seems and that's what you know i've seen thus far could be wrong and keep in mind i mean even swift is working with them as well so we'll see you know what comes of this we'll see how serious it is and remember you know ripple is leading this coalition of over 40 companies that launched pay id which is a platform agnostic payments network notice just like in the previous video technology agnostic platform agnostic value agnostic they're building everything so that only the best will survive and the best will prove itself it's not based off of nepotism favoritism literally the best tech the best bridge asset, wink, wink, will survive. And that is exactly how I personally would like my investments to play out. Invest into the best, most grounded, you know, technology that is going to surpass all others in a variety of ways. And you should do well in this space, provided you're patient, intelligence, intelligent, and obviously, you know, do your own research and do not overinvest what you are, you know, more than you're willing to lose. All right, next, same narrative. I'm not even going to go into this article again, Cointelegraph.com. I always skim through them as always, but right here, XRP Crypto Wolf sharing across the board. Japan's finance minister says blockchain would be key in the world's battle against the pandemic. Again, digital acceleration. We have every country doing this. I mean, literally every country and their mom is talking about, you know, how this pandemic, how blockchain, how jobs are on the rise, how everything's going into DeFi. We have, you know, Asia saying they'll kind of kick it, you know, kick it off and then hopefully migrate it over here and again. Quote right here, what we what we would need is to work together and collaborate to consider the best use of blockchains under the best governance. Interesting. So working together, public and private sector. OK, also remember the IMF, this old video of crypto assets resurfaced. We have our buddy XRP, Ethereum, Bitcoin right here. Just talking about cryptocurrencies, I mean, again, guys, nothing you haven't seen before. Just remember, groups like the International Monetary Fund, the Chamber of Digital Commerce are talking about these public assets, literally showing XRP. If you really thought that this was going to be a security or a scam, why would these giant governments, international bodies as well, you know, BIS, World Bank, be speaking about them? The World Bank praised X Rapid in like 2017. You guys can find all this information online. Again, it's just kept hush, hush, hush. All right. And you guys, you know, there's different views. You can pretend that, you know, the news and social media is distracting us with this or that. Um, what if in reality, we're just distracting ourselves? Because, you know, last time I checked, I, I still have free will. I can pay attention to whatever I want. Is it really there's, you know, something evil controlling us at all times of the day that is conscious of it? Or is it simply us just, you know, getting distracted? Again, that's just, you know, an in entertaining a different point of view. I honestly do believe both. All right. So again, IMF News just sharing this. What are cryptocurrencies? Notice they reshared it as well. August 23rd, 2020. Okay. And again, Kristalina of the IMF is speaking very highly of some big, big things to come the next six to 18 months. And funny enough, that is exactly how I see this market also reacting with that. We are going to see some massive changes in the future. Um, a lot of people believe that, you know, equities and real estate are going to take, you know, a little breather and have to whatever you want. I don't know if you want to use a strong word like crash, like we saw kind of the stock market do and, you know, earlier this year in March, or if you think that it's going to, you know, kind of just take a breather before getting its next leg up. I would love for my own selfish reasons and, you know, please don't be offended by this because I don't know what business you guys are in. I would love for crypto assets and metals to finally kind of do a flipping take up you know obviously go into profits massively and then as real estate is low you know take some profits and take advantage of those market swings or you know improve my position in some equities we know that you know even real estate commercialized real estate per se is working on getting tokenized day in and day out we know that residentially that's a lot more complex we've kind of talked about tokenizing different assets we've shown those pie charts and uh venn diagrams and showing what is you know easier to do we have groups like securitize i think we'll talk about them um in like one moment 
Uh, let's see. I think it's over here. Yeah. So Ripple backed and also Coinbase backed. They invest in a lot of the same companies, so they might have a vested interest. Keep that in mind. They partnered with, and I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's L-I-F-U-L-L, so Liffle, Liffle, to start a service where real estate companies can issue and trade real estate as digital securities. Well, what we're seeing, you know, more and more groups, we saw even Matthew L-I-N-Y sharing, you know, digital issuance and uh, what was it, like 35 issuances on uh, Archax or Arcax. Interestingly enough, more and more of these groups are getting their feet, feet wet. You can look at, you know, what Tezos is doing. There's a lot of groups and there's going to be a lot of winners and I'm just curious how we can pick the winners, okay? Um, and again, Ripple's business strategy. Oh, yeah, I was just reading a little bit about that. All right, and then let's see, where was I? So right here, with Ukraine, another country, another central bank, and their official said central bank digital currencies need the private sector to be competitive. Sounds just like Christopher Giancarlo, an advisor for Ripple, formerly the chairman of the CFTC. But I'm sure that's just another coincidence to you Bitcoin maxis. And again, the ecosystem of the CBDC should include the participation of private market players to set interaction between and consumers and the central bank. Or between end, excuse me, between end consumers and the central bank. My English needs some work. All right, and then right here also, just going in line with the trend, seeing these countries across the board, guys, XRP Crypto Wolf sharing all of this information day in and day out. Always, all right? So China's blockchain-based service network next major update will be on October 31st. As we can see, the Chinese blockchain service network is a cross-cloud, cross-portal, cross-platform, and soon to be probably cross-chain global infrastructure network network used to deploy and operate all types of blockchain dApps, dApps. Now, these are decentralized applications or distributed applications, however you want to cut it. All right. Again, China, we've seen the trends. We've seen, you know, tens of thousands of jobs in blockchain being posted. We've obviously seen their levels ahead compared to the United States in terms of at least digital wallet adoption. Um, it's all right in front of you. And people are just ignoring the facts with, you know, what Ripple is doing, what many groups are doing. It's way beyond just XRP, but I am just a permable in this ecosystem because if you really believe that in the future, XRP will stay at this price point when it is actually solving real problems at scale, you, you know, you may be just lacking, you know, the vision and really understanding what is at hand, in, you know, here. All right. I know I was talking the other day and I'm just kind of ranting here, but understand XRP is going to be that medium of exchange. We see, you know, all blockchain, all use cases will still have value exchange. And that's, you know, very, very powerful. And, you know, just like a lot of people with Ripple, with Spring and some of the original employees, they said all the money. We didn't make that quote up for hype. They literally said all the money, all the value. So everything that can be tokenized that we talk about, you know, intellectual property, commercialized real estate, stock, metals, everything that is way beyond all the fiat. So literally everything. All right. And again, I was, you know, going back and forth with people and just saying, you know, the potential speaks for itself and I'll be ecstatic. And I think you will be, too, if you comprehend what's at play here with even a fraction of that value moving over the ledger or that fraction of the value holding, you know, increasing demand of XRP. That would be, you know, absolutely insane. We are I mean, we're not even at a trillion dollar market cap for XRP. I mean, obviously, I think you guys understand the market that crypto stands to just disrupt. I can see the whole crypto market. Um, and people don't get it. They don't think that even XRP could reach a market capitalization of a trillion dollars. And that is a drop in the bucket. I don't think you guys understand. You can't use stock metrics to measure crypto assets. Market cap, again, I say this a thousand times, but for newcomers, market cap, just like in Wolf of Wall Street, it's fairy dust. It's a Fugazi. It doesn't exist. Market cap is a made up number, which is literally last traded price multiplied by the circulating supply. It is a fake number. That is not how much money is liquid and able to get pulled out of that market. It's just how much money is represented. It's fake, but people don't get it. And we're entering a new paradigm. And soon enough, people are going to catch up. Those of you that are here now are catching up and already aware of this. All right. Now we're talking. If you get a fraction of that money, awesome. But the funny thing is, and where this, you know, this silly term, and it's true, the flywheel effect takes place is once. XRP, the funny thing is once it captures just even a fraction of that value, XRP is like a black hole. That's what I want to, you know, use as an analogy. It's analogous with this. XRP, just like a black hole, 
Once it captures some of that value, its gravity, so to speak in quotes, increases, and this is making it more likely to keep sucking up all value continuously, all right? This is increasing demand. There's going to be a variety of factors to increase demand. I mean, people are going to be holding it. People are going to be transacting, and guess what? When all of this is occurring, there's going to be a smaller amount, a smaller supply of XRP, and what happens when more XRP is needed? It pushes the system, and there's an overlap between XRP. And then if you look at any of the order books, when there is an overlap of transaction, what happens with the buys and sells? The pressure changes. This is why when something happens quickly, it really could. Right now, I don't care if you disagree with me, teach your own. I've been doing extremely well, so I'm going to stick with believing my own things. I think that this market is completely suppressed. There is an algorithm. There's a fractal at play. It's ever-changing. The AI trading bots have information based off of you know the trading books and order books also integrated with the news. Everything is connected, and it might be just some type of AI super organism. Um, and that is very possible, but in due time, when, you know, whatever, flip the switch or goes up slow and steady, this market is going to go up, all right? The entire crypto asset market, and then some of the projects are going to go to zero. Regulation hasn't even come in and smashed anything yet. And that is where, you know, I'm nervous for people, but I'm also excited because there's a lot of opportunity provided you are, you know, hedged, provided you are aware of the risks in this marketplace. There is no such thing as get rich quick. Remember, the majority of you that are, you know, maybe putting in money, you lose money, you make money here. You know, people are going to call you an overnight, you know, success. But in reality, it probably took you 20 years, five years to become an overnight success. And only, you know, we're going to walk away knowing that. So I just want you guys to be safe, be smart. I'm excited for this market. Everything I'm sharing with you are my genuine thoughts. Can I be wrong with things? Yes. But again, follow, you know, the breadcrumbs if you think that's what they really are. I think they're going to be much bigger than that. And I'm really excited to see how 2020 continues on. We'll see if there's even any mention with the negative interest rates. Regardless, this is going to be pushing money out of the banks. What are people going to seek doing? Some people are still out of work at home. Will, we, will there be another stimulus check? Are people starting to look for you know, alternative avenues for investing? We have you know, even the OCC news, and he was saying a huge fraction of Americans, and I think he was wrong about the number, to be honest, um, but again, globally or even in the United States, the trends are growing. And you can't ignore what is happening. And I don't think that we can stop what's coming. And every day we sit, we you know complain about the price, or maybe your mood is dictated by the current price of crypto assets. But then I ask myself, you know, I always say, man, I wish somebody could do something about this. I wish we could just make you know your asset or my holdings moon. And then I realized I am that somebody, and so are you. So what can you do for this ecosystem to help obviously bring true buildings, true innovation, and inform people wisely without just all, you know, speculation and hype, provided everything plays a role in this ecosystem. So even the things that you think are really bad, like scams and hype-based videos, they capture attention. And with scams, it will bring further regulation. So sometimes the chaos is actually order at a higher level. All right. I keep ranting, guys. I wish you understood how weird my mind is. But I mean, even, you know, across the board, I saw Matthew LNY on Twitter sharing, you know, further developments with mobile wallets in MoneyGram. And it was a group called Airtel Africa. They announced a partnership. We know Ripple owns roughly 10% of MoneyGram. And we're talking, you know, several millions, I believe already, if you want to check that out, to receive, you know, new international money transfers, all with mobile wallet integration. It's right in front of us. We're talking, you know, well over 20 markets in Africa, another country, which is obviously huge for the unbanked, the underbanked. And, you know, don't get fooled into thinking that, you know, everyone wants to help each other. These banks, these groups also want to make bank, so to speak. All right. There's a lot of opportunity focus on the BRICS nations. We're going to, I don't know if we're going to hear, you know, maybe get distracted and with, you know, turn words and stuff on, you know, the election or where they're finally going to try to scare people and talk about the BRICS nations and the threat to the U.S. dollar reserve status. I'm really curious how it's going to play out. I don't know exactly how it's going to play out. We're all just kind of watching the news day by day, speculating what's going to occur. Um, and in the meantime, guys, just be smart. You know what you hold. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks.